Hi everyone, Scott with Dearly Departed Tours. Today's video is about an infamous unsolved Hollywood murder. But before I talk about that, I want to give a quick shout out and thank you to some of the people who are sponsoring this page by the Patreon or PayPal link below this video. Virgil Blum, Jolene, Sally Tate, Trey McElwee, Alan Malone, and Julian Urena. Your support is so, so very much appreciated. Now, on to Hollywood. On Wilcox in Hollywood, there's an apartment building called the Duet. Could have called the Emily, because that, where that was actually was where Auntie M's house was from the Wizard of Oz. Uh, Claire Blandick was her name, and Claire Blandick killed herself by putting a plastic cleaning bag over her head in the building that used to be right there. It's also where one of the Dolly sisters uh, committed suicide. However, the reason we're here is because of that building called the Lolito Apartments. The Lido Apartments were built in 1928. There are 100 units in the building. Currently, the studio apartments start at $1,900 a month, going up to the two bedrooms, which rent at $2,800 a month. The last time the building changed hands was in 2010, when it sold for $9.4 million. So this is the building that uh, Victor Killian lived in. And died in, murdered in. And uh, it's become kind of a very nice, <laughs> expensive, it's not cheap to live here. But you can see what a juxtaposition Hollywood is, what it's become. The lobby of this place was used for the interior photo of the Hotel California album. It used to be kind of a, a divey place. There used to be a bar in the lobby where Ed Wood used to drink. Ed Wood would, I know I've said this before, probably a hundred videos, would float checks over there at the Playboy Liquor. And just beyond there was where Glenn Quinn's club, the, gold, the um, Goldfinger was. And just here is where they filmed some of Blackula. William Marshall. I guess this was the old entrance to the Lido, or maybe the bar that was beneath it. But the current entry to the Lido. It's over here. Victor Killian began his acting career on the stage and was very successful in vaudeville and in plays. In one play, Valley Forge, he appeared without pants. It became a running joke that he could never find a pair that fit. It was a hit, but people kept wanting him to do the pants routine. He said once, imagine making a bid to fame on a no-pants basis. Imagine being condemned never to wear pants again. They have me scared. I go over my clothes daily in the closet to see that no one has absconded with my trousers, thus forcing me into my terrifying routine. Killian came to Hollywood in 1930 and signed a contract with Columbia Pictures. In 1942, he lost an eye during a movie shoot with John Wayne, Reap the Wild Wind. Victor Killian didn't have leading man looks, so he gratefully accepted character work. In 1976, Norman Lear called, and Killian was cast as Grandpa Larkin in the television program Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. The show was very cutting edge, addressing extramarital affairs, sex surrogates, a nervous breakdown, Gore Vidal, and country music. Victor Killian's character was the icing on the cake. 
Avoiding the no-pants routine was a lost cause. Killian was cast as an elderly man who exposed himself to the residents of Fernwood, USA, known as the Fernwood Flasher. Oh, there's the Princess Grace Apartments. Somebody committed suicide out of the building and landed. Landed on the railings over here. Or on the uh, fence, the spiked fence. Don't know quite how they could have done that. Imagine there's a possibility. When there's a will. I would love to get in there, but I won't be able to. But my friend, Elisa, has. The commonly known story is that Victor Killian was drinking in a Hollywood bar on Thursday, the 8th of March, 1979. Heading home, he walked past the famous Grauman's Chinese Theater and ran into a person, no one knows who, and brought this person back to his home in the Lido, apartment 226. Again, that's the story. The fact is that Victor Killian was last seen getting his newspaper by neighbors on Friday the 9th. Victor Killian's son, worried that he hadn't heard from his father in a couple of days, decided to check on him. On the afternoon of Sunday the 11th, he was able to enter the apartment with a pass key. The deadbolt inside the apartment was not engaged. He found his father dead. According to the autopsy report, Killian was in a slouched position on the floor in front of his recliner chair, which was at the foot of the bed facing the television. Lacerations to the right and left side of his head. There was blood on the foot of the bed where it appeared his head had lain. The television was still on, and Killian had an earplug from the television in his right ear and a hearing aid in his left ear. The apartment was ransacked. There was no forced entry, nothing appeared to be stolen, and no murder weapon was found. It was estimated that Killian had been dead for about 12 hours. There were five lacerations to his head, approximately two inches deep, made with some sort of tool that left triangular wounds. Each of these wounds could be considered fatal, as they caused fractures with brain injuries. The autopsy also noted a possible defense injury on his left middle finger. His official cause of death, cranial cerebral injuring, multiple blunt force trauma to the head. Victor Killian was 88 years old. He died with his pants on, brown, socks too. To this day, his murder remains unsolved. He was cremated at Grandview Cemetery, and his cremains were scattered in the Rose Garden in Westwood Memorial Park. Thank you to my friend Jackie Craig, who took this video. Among the fellow scatterees in this garden, fellow thespians Estelle Winwood and Edith Massey. Now here's a strange bit of trivia. Victor Killian's last acting job was an episode of All in the Family called The Return of Stephanie's Father. Another elderly actor appeared in that episode, 83-year-old Charles Wagenheim. Now here's what's bizarre. Charles Wagenheim was also murdered in Hollywood, just a few blocks away from Victor Killian, only five days earlier. Also, blunt force head trauma. Unlike Victor Killian... Charles Wagenheim's murder was solved. But less than two weeks after both of these men were brutally murdered, their episode of All in the Family aired on national television. There have been reports that Killian's ghost paces back and forth in front of Groman's Chinese theater, searching for his killer. In fact, an episode of Ghost Hunters did an investigation and came up with evidence that Victor Killian haunts Madame Tussaud's Wax Museum, which was built on what was then a parking lot next to the Chinese theater. Wax mannequins. Victor, are you here with us right now? 
let us know that you're here. Victor, can you come? I, I swear, I just heard something speak out. So, Victor Killian haunts a building located a half a mile from his murder location that was erected 25 years after his murder. Whatever. You heard me. 